and let's get that gets us to the next real um, question that we've been get, you know, raising here, uh, and that is um, uh, newer agents. Uh, and I think really uh, a trial that took me by surprise uh, was Bolero 2. Um, I think that um, uh, this is a trial of uh, exemestane and avarolimus uh, in non-steroidal aromatase inhibitor refractory advanced breast cancer. This is a phase three trial uh, comparing of avarolimus and exemestane versus exemestane and placebo in a two-to-one randomization. This is 724 patients uh, with hormone-positive advanced breast cancer that had recurrence or progression while receiving previous therapy with a non-steroidal aromatase inhibitor, uh, either in the adjuvant setting or to treat advanced disease. Um, the median progression-free survival in this trial uh, in the experimental arm with Averolimus was 11 months uh, versus 4.1 months uh, with exemestane alone. Uh, and that 4.1 month um, actual number is quite uh, reassuring uh, because that is actually the number that was seen in the effect trial of Fulvestrian versus Averolimus in the same patient population. Um, and now there are multiple guidelines uh, that recommend considering the combination of verolimus and exemestane for HER2 negative, hormone receptor positive, postmenopausal women progressing after first line treatment. And so the, the question really is we, we have this very exciting data, um, and who would be considered to be the ideal patient uh, for this? Uh, Denise, let's start with you. You know, I, I certainly use this combination and have embraced it. We participated in the Bolero 2 trial, in all the Boleros, Bolero 1 that hasn't reported out yet, and Bolero 3 that just pointed up, reported out at ASCO in the HER2 positive population. But I think, you know, for me, this combination really reinforces the resistance and the escape pathway that we've figured out in this particular group of patients that can benefit from an mTOR inhibitor, the whole uh, PI3, AKT, mTOR pathway. And when we look at the Bolero 2 data, I think, you know, there wasn't a group that was presented in, in the uh, publication that didn't seem to benefit. So, you know, was the group with bone-only disease, those that had soft tissue, those that had visceral disease. They looked at, I think really the same thing I think I do in my practice, um, is this patient, a patient that just relapsed um, from adjuvant therapy or had prior systemic hormonal therapy or um, chemotherapy. There's a quarter of patients that had chemotherapy for metastatic disease. And any way that that was looked at, all of those patients demonstrated a benefit. I think what's been perhaps a little bit disappointing, but I think recapitulated in many other trials in the HER2 patients as well, is we don't have yet a marker to really select those patients who are the most likely. And it's not without uh, effort. I think, you know, uh, Hortobaji really went through and looked, and I think maybe somewhat surprising to me, the patients had the least amount of aberrations were those that um, actually benefited. And I would have thought perhaps, you know, this would have played a bigger role in that pathway. So I think many of us, when we we look at hormonal therapies and adding a, a, a novel targeted agent that I think makes maybe in, in some ways hormonal therapy a little bit more labor intensive for these patients because there's a lot of patient education on the side effect profile um, that we clearly want to monitor that make just standard endocrine therapy now with a novel agent something to, to really evaluate these patients for some of the, the side effects. Um, so if we had a, a way of really figuring out that group that's most likely to uh, benefit from a biomarker is, is still what I think many of us are struggling with when sure. we balance some of the side effects. And that gets into another question. One of the reasons I said I was surprised by Bolero 2 uh, is that there was a trial performed five years previously to that, which was Temcerolimus and Letrozole as first-line therapy, uh, and that actually was a negative trial. Uh, and I think a lot of us, I think on this table, participated in that study. And I think when Bolero 2 was announced, I believe about a year and a half, two years ago, mm -hmm. we all were very, at least I was very surprised that it was actually going to work. Um, let me ask you a question, Mark. Do you have any ideas why Temcerolimus would not work and Averolimus would in this setting? I don't know that that's the case. It may be the clinical setting. You know, you may induce particular <coughs> mechanisms to anti-estrogens by prior exposure to a non aromatase inhibitor, and that might set the stage for a response to an mTOR inhibitor, whereas in, uh, in another line it may not. So it may not be a difference between the inhibitors, but rather the clinical setting. I just wanted to be, be sure. I'm, I'm always compelled whenever the word Everolimus comes up. 
I want to talk about the steroid mouth rinse to prevent the yes, very... Yes, thank, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I know. Right. We're, we're steroid mouthwash uh, passionate about this, but about the Horizon trial that uh, Antonio Wolf published uh, just recently, which is a, a big credit to him because you hate to have those negative trials sitting out there for many right. years. Uh, but, you know, the toxicity profile was a little bit different, and the uh, amount of drug given and the schedule was a little funny. So, you know, it could be any number of things. It could be that you're treating a sort of mostly hormone therapy naive first line group of patients. And But there were a thousand patients. You'd think it would have come out in the wash. And maybe it's just that the amount of drug given wasn't enough. Uh, it's uh, interesting because it doesn't seem to me that it could only be that it's just that we magically picked the right second line population, although that was the same in the TAMRAD trial. Uh, because the neoadjuvant study suggested that we dropped KI67 and also improved clinical response for what it's worth. So uh, I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting question, but we'll learn it. Bolero 4 is looking at Everolimus in the first line setting. Okay, right. fair enough. And so speaking of kind of... Uh, steroid mouthwash. Uh, steroid mouthwash. But <laughs> going beyond steroid mouthwash for a sec, although does, does you want to talk about the steroid mouthwash for our <laughs> listeners, please? I do because I couldn't use the drug in the beginning. I kept having to get down to five milligrams all the time because about 40% of the patients will get some really severe aptostomatitis within the first um, month or two. It's an early thing, and then you're dropping the dose, and then the patients uh, progress. And so... Um, these steroid mouth rinses, um, we use our, our standard miracle mouthwash, whatever yours is, and then crush up four tablets of hydrocortisone, 20 milligrams each, just crush it up, put it in there, and prophylax, you know, it's 10 cc swish and spit four times a day, they, it's miracle. It, it just has and taken I am a, a true believer in this yeah, approach. It so works. How long would you use it for? How long would you use well, it for? Well, the thing is, you get the mucositis almost all occurs in the first six to eight weeks. So you, you patients start, and we were talking about this yesterday that, you know, I have patients who, you know, I'll say to them, oh, you don't have any mouth sores. You know, it's like three weeks into it. And so how's the mouthwash going? And they said, well, you know, I stopped it after the first few days because I didn't get any sores. The majority of patients don't get sores. So I let them. Those patients do what they want. The others, we use it three to four times a day for at least the first couple of months. First couple of months. And there's a trial we're going to look at dexamethasone, just a simple solution. It's 0 0.5 milligrams per uh, 5 cc's. And, you know, so that's going to be one arm, not compounded, versus, you know, whatever your miracle mouthwash is that you use at home with the uh, four tablets of the uh, 20 milligram hydrocortisone, so 80 total in your 500 cc bottle of miracle mouthwash, prophylax, six, eight weeks. You can you won't reduce again. You will be at ten. <laughs> it's okay. really it's really quite dramatic, yeah.